Welcome to Love Connection, where old-fashioned romance meets modern-day technology, where you hear all the intimate details of a first date. And now, here's the host of Love Connection, Chuck Woolery. first guest. She was here a few weeks ago and the audience selected a date for her. She recently lost, listen to this, 137 pounds. Works out seven days a week. She bicycles up to 75 miles every weekend and she says that she has to quit dating most men after about four months. And she claims that she's juggling about five different men right now. Hmm. Please welcome Rebecca Vanconcelos. Juggling five men. Yeah. Get strong arms for that. Well, no. It's I know just it really fun. wasn't worth much. But you know, it went through my mind. I'm like, I'll take a shot. I mean, I, it's one of those things you should have just swallowed and forgotten. Are they all kind of the same type, these guys? No, there's one that's really a lot of fun. There's one that's debatable that I like doing debates with. Oh, a there's debatable a guy, guy that um, takes very good care of me and spends a lot of money on me. And there's one that you just can do crazy things like skinny dipping with. <laughs> now, out of, out of those five guys and those five descriptions, which one do you spend most of the time with? The one that I can do crazy things with, like skinny dipping. Oh, so not... Yeah, I can be myself with. <laughs> now, your mom and dad must have some kind of opinion about your social life. What do they think? Uh, they should think I should find just one person, preferably the wealthy one, and <laughs> settle down and just have kids and stay with one. Do you have any desire to do that? No, not for a long time. No, no. Ever been close to getting married in your life? Yes, I ha was. I was supposed to get married December of 1988, and... Um, now, how much did we weigh December of 1988? Uh, December 1988, I was a size 24, and I weighed a little bit over 260 pounds. Whoa! Yeah. So now this guy you were going to marry, was he a little tiny skinny guy or a great big fat guy? Well, when I met um, Art, I was real thin, and he was thin, and through the relationship, we both kind of... <laughs> you ate your way yeah. right into oblivion. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. We kind of just got fat together. <laughs> Rebecca agreed to let our audience uh, choose her date for her, and we're going to meet them right now. We're going to see the three men they had to choose from. First, there's Glenn. He's thinking seriously about dyeing his hair black. I have no idea why. Next, there's Brett. He works 50 hours a week, goes to school, but he could still find plenty of time for the right woman, he said. Finally, Jerry claims that women tell him that he has the best legs on the planet. <laughs> Okay, you're going to find out which man the audience selected for, Reca uh, for Rebecca, and we'll do that in two and two. Be right back at you. Yeah. All right, we're back now. Why don't you remind us who the audience chose? I forgot. Jerry. Chose Jerry. Yeah. He's backstage. Say hello to Jerry Rick. Hello, Jerry. Can you hear me all right? I can hear you. Good. Just make yourself at home back there, and Rebecca will start us off. Well, we talked several times on the telephone, and um, from those conversations, Jerry informed me that he wanted to go on a picnic. Um, I explained to him that I lived in Redondo Beach, and he lives in L um, Hollywood, and he didn't want to drive um, any farther, you know, farther than he had to, so he, just, he wanted the picnic at Hancock Park, which is at the Liberia Tar Pits. Mm -hmm. Well, we decided on the picnic, and... Um, he, I talked to him Thursday, and Thursday he gave me a long list of stuff to bring to the picnic. And I brought out the list, just so that I wouldn't forget anything, because it is a really long list. Good Lord, it is. He wanted um, seven to eight sandwiches. He wanted them filled with meat, and he wanted them really filled. He wanted ham, roast beef, pastrami, turkey, corned beef, oh, wait, wait, salami. No. He wanted them with lettuce and tomato. He wanted mayo on the sandwiches. He wanted different types of bread, like whole wheat, white wheat. He wanted three different salads, preferably homemade, because if he has a lot of spices, well, you know, he I can't eat a lot of spices because hey, it hurts could, his tummy, so I made them homemade. He wanted fresh cheese. He wanted fudge chocolate cake. He wanted fudge brownies without nuts. He wanted lots of fruits. 
preferably with no, you know, bruises on him. He wanted fruit with no bruises. Fruit with no bruises. No, I he prefer fruit with no bruises too. Well, you know, you I know, didn't, I didn't expect her to bring all of this. Munchies. I, I just mentioned a lot you, of things that I you, wanted, and yeah. I didn't think she was going to. I think she was shopping for all of her her five or eight boyfriends, is what I think. And I didn't think she was going to bring it all. I mean, I can't possibly eat all that. He on the telephone, Chuck. He insisted that I bring the food. He said that he had a big appetite and he wanted all this food that he could eat all this food okay let's let's now well, get down to on friday yeah, on i friday. spent a little bit over two and a half hours shopping for the food because i really wanted the date to be perfect uh -huh. well, we get it all packed and we were supposed to meet at the la brea tar pits on the observation deck mm -hmm. that overlooks la brea tar pits mm -hmm. and i want to mention at this time there's only one tar pit there's only one observation deck there's only one staircase that goes up to that observation deck we were supposed to meet at 10 30. i arrived at 10 15 and by the time i got all the stuff to the top it was 10 30. Right. at 10 45 Jerry doesn't show. He's not there. But oh, there was, was a there. lot of people. I was there and I was they looking were for her. Here. I was I was over there and I was looking for her. I was circling those tar pits. I smelled like tar by the time. You should have looked for a woman with an enormous bunch of food well, see, beside her. She knew what I looked like, but I wouldn't know her if I tripped over her in the men's room. You know what I mean? She, I, so I was just looking for a picnic basket. That's what I was looking for, and she was supposedly would recognize me. And I, I know where she probably was, over by the big beaver, which is uh, over by the, uh, the La Brea Tar Pits. And I circled around, and of course, I was carrying a large blanket with me. You know, well, you, finally, was, you finally got together. Let's get you together. Obviously, this was... No, we didn't get together. Didn't it was 11 o'clock, and I was escorted from La Brea Tar Pits by two police officers because <laughs> <laughs> there was... Are you serious? Well, there was two men on top of the observation deck that kept irritating me, so a woman went down from the tar pits, got a police officer, and two police officers came. They escorted me back to my car. Still no Jerry. I get home at 1 o'clock because there's a lot of traffic from Los Angeles to Redonda Beach, mm -hmm. and Jerry has a message on my answer machine. Well, I talk to him on the telephone. I give him a call. We reschedule. Then what happened? Um, which is kind of a follow-up. We, we follow finally up. met at Cantor's, which is like five minutes away from his home because he, she he didn't want to drive. Place. She and I said, place. Cantor's on Fairfax is fine. So I showed up to Cantor's with a girlfriend because of several things he said on the phone. He made the comment that he would rather have the date with my girlfriend, Michelle, I versus me because that. I'm ugly and Michelle's pretty. I and never he made said that. that. Say to you don't want to go through this again. No, no, no. Well, no, Jerry, maybe we'll see you another not. time. And uh, sorry, things didn't work out. Anyway, when the audience chooses a date, boy, they didn't do that one very well. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't work out as this one didn't work out. We uh, give the uh, person another chance at two more people. So, Rebecca, you have two left. There's Glenn. He's a salesman. He's not afraid uh, to date his clients, he says. He also wanted to change his hair to black. And Brett, uh, in the winter, he meets women at the ski slopes. And in the summer, he meets them at volleyball courts. What you, which one do you like? Would you like to go with one of those three guys? I'll try number one. Well, okay. Well, of course, we'll pick up the tab on that. And I hope this works out for you, Rebecca. I really that do. That makes two of us. Thank I'm you. really sorry about yeah. the first date. Like well, I said, I, I tried too. making it you yeah. know, work. Well, it sounds like you really put a lot of effort toward it, and I'm sure that this will be much better, hopefully. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank and we're going to come right back with another couple. Stay with us. Yeah. Because his son makes him sweat. He admits that he's a big flirt. He usually drops hints as to what kind of uh, presence he likes. And before he says that, uh, before getting involved in... Uh, <laughs> what? And he says that before getting involved with a woman, he'll make sure she's willing to kick in her share of the cost. Please welcome Richard Massey. Yeah. Hey, Richard. Hey. Have a seat. And before and before, I said before about five times there, didn't I? <laughs> now, what are yeah. these colors? These look like uh, Kenya colors or South African it's kind of colors, are they? Kintico. What are they? Kintico. Yeah, that's really pretty. That's interesting. Did you get Thank that you. there? No, no. Uh, uh, in fact, it's a uh, uniform for a men's group that I belong to. Oh, I see. Yeah. Now, how soon do you ask a woman, uh, or how soon do you ask if a woman will spend some money on you? You go out two, three times, four times, one first time? No. Uh, you know how you get to talking? Uh -huh. When you're on a date, or right. it's right away. I mean, <laughs> right. I mean, I don't waste any time. I'm a very aggressive person. I like to know exactly what they like. I want them to know what I like, so that I don't like spending, wasting any time. 
Well, now, know. do you feel like your relationships are more 50-50 or more 70 no, 30 on your side? Then. Or on uh, their I don't side, you count, more I don't from a count money, okay? It, mm -hmm. It's a, all about if your money don't spend like my money, I don't want to be bothered, yeah. okay? It's like if, if, you, if you expect me to take care of you, right. all right, and uh, like I spend all my money, you spent, put yours in the bank and on your back, mm -hmm. that's dead. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look at the one that Richard had to choose from. We're going to take a look at your, uh, your threesome. Now, watch closely because you're going to vote, okay? Here we go. First, Eunice, she complains that most of the men that she dates don't listen, and they're uh, always right. And they never want to, uh, a woman to disagree with them. And she says that she has to learn to dump these guys a lot more quickly. Now, here's how she expects a man to introduce himself. I like, you know, a man to say, well, uh, hi, how are you? And... I'll say how I am and just kind of start talking. No, this yo baby, come over here, that type of crap. You know, but a lot of them do it because I guess a lot of women fall for it. Next, there's Joanna. She loves going to the beach, dancing, eating French food whenever she can. She cuts hair, so she thinks that offering a free trim is a good way to get a man's attention. She gave us some other reasons why a man would want to date her, and here they are. I am outgoing, I am lovable, I have a great personality, I get along with everyone I meet. And if I don't get along with someone that I meet, most of the time, 99.9, .9, it is their fault because I can get along with anyone. Finally, Barthelia. She uh, spends, uh, or when she spends time with her friends, she likes to come up with new ideas to make huge amounts of cash. She's looking for a man who smells good and all the time and already has huge amounts of cash. She expects any man she dates to have the time of his life with her, and here's more on that. You're going to enjoy yourself. You're going to have fun. You're going to get happy. You're going to feel good. And, and I can go on and on and on and on and on. And it's just going to be a good date. When you get home, you're going to say, Ooh, that's one day I don't know. <laughs> Those are the three women that Richard had to choose from. Time for you to vote. Who do you like best? Make your choice now, please. All right, Richard's going to tell us who he picked. Who you pick? I picked Joanna. Joanna. She's backstage. Say hello to Joanna Mark. Hi, Joanna. Hello, Richard. How you doing, Don? Make yourself at home back there. Okay. Richard's going to start us off. Yeah, look at it. I mm -hmm. mean, the day was fine, okay? Uh, <laughs> We need more I information call, I, than I, that. Okay. <laughs> I called her join up, yeah. and we talked a couple different times, okay? Uh -huh. um, she described herself. Uh, we went over basically what she had wrote down in... On her bio. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like her father gave her a lot of different tips on dating, yeah. okay? So we joked about that. Uh -huh. And then she told me, that on, she wrote down that she liked men with short hair because they had, you know, they were, uh, they knew where they were at you know they men with short hair know where right, they're at right i mean it's like they didn't have to be long, longer people like i had that mean that every long-haired guy is lost i forget what? exactly what she said so, okay Excuse but me. It, it went well Why with me because i'm, I'm, I'm you got short hair hey i just cut it off okay oh, and i'm self-conscious about yeah. it <laughs> i can't stand it. Well, but how anyway did she look when you met her oh the girl is bad okay i mean um <laughs> she's a very seductive sensuous woman with long hair and i love all of that Okay. She told me she had big legs, you know, hips. She worked out. She ran, did so aerobics. Ready. How do he look to you? And I couldn't wait. All right. <laughs> um, How do he look to you, Joanna? He was he was very attractive. Preferably, I I like darker men. But when he picked me up, and he had a beard and his dimples were just gorgeous. So I I said, well, this is fine. I can deal with yeah. this. So now, you picked her up, and where did you go? Okay, um, I picked her up, we went, we got in the car, she started, she just looked at me first, okay, before we started to talk. So I told her, go ahead, because uh, she hadn't seen me or anything, and we just went riding and we were talking. So we got out to the marina where we went to eat. So uh, I got to looking at her, because the outfit that she had on was really hot. Is that okay? it? I mean, it was low cut, you know. <laughs> I mean, she had, she had... It wasn't, it wasn't real low cut. It was just an average V-neck. Yeah, I, I got a feeling this man has a, a vivid imagination. I mean, check, check. <laughs> uh, the outfit, 
Cynthia was really nice. Oh, he's you like I mean, what? every now and then, I think she got self-conscious because you know how women go to, you know how they wear things, but then they want to go to pulling them. And <laughs> 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 pull like I mean, because, them. see, I love to evade people, yeah. women's space. Mm -hmm. You know, like when I said I'm uh, a flirty, mm -hmm. you know, and I get right up on you them. You get in their and face. I go to talking to them and everything, see their reaction. So now, right in my face. He was, <laughs> we were nose to nose. Was it track. uncomfortable for you, Joanne, nose or did you like nose. it? Uh, well, a little, a little bit, a little bit, but he's, he's very attractive, so I, I, I dealt with it. Yeah. He got nose to nose, and uh, he asked me if he could bite my lip oh! or, my, or my tongue. <laughs> and I told him, I said, not yet, not yet, let's try to get through the date. <laughs> Tell me how the date ends. Tell me exactly the, how it ends. How it ends? Okay, we, uh, it gets kind of late, because I got to make a 6.30 call at work, right? right? So... I ride, I take, take her, her home. home. I mean, well, I take her back to her shop because mm -hmm. I don't believe she wants me to find out where she lives at. Yeah. She, she takes you back to your shop. What happens as he, as he drops you off? Uh, well, before we get to the salon, I was talking about how I really loved men that wore short hair. Uh -huh. And he says, well, I cut my hair off and I put my hand on the back of his neck and rubbed the back of his neck and he just, just went into a little chill and he kissed me right Right, right there in the car at the light, but surprisingly, I lit him. It was very nice. <laughs> they picked Barthelia. Yeah, 46 percent. I think it was because of her bite more than anything else. She was saying, "What a great time you'd have." But anyway, if you want to go out with her, we'll pay for it. If not, you're on your own. You can do what you like. No, I like to go out with John again. Is that all right with you, Joanna? Yes. Come on. Out. Sounds to me like you all are having a lot of fun. Have a seat. You were. Go ahead, Richard. Sit down. You're doing fine. <laughs> you did. Both of you had fun, didn't you? Yes, we did. Well, hopefully you'll have fun enjoyable. this time, too. Thanks for coming on the show. We enjoyed having Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, we're going to come right back with the next guest right after this. Stay tuned for more of Love Connection. Oklahoma, but she's uh, certainly not an open type. She lists polo as her favorite sport. She used to be a private investigator, really. And she's earning her black belt in karate. Good night. Please welcome Julie Corey. Yeah. Hi, Julie. How are you? Nice to meet you. Good night, Julie, private investigator, black belt. What does it take to earn a black belt? Just knocking everybody out in the shop or what? No, actually, it takes a lot of um, blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> just it? like, yeah, just like you would imagine. Um, a lot of dedication, mm -hmm. perseverance. Uh, when I earn my I black admire belt. anybody who can do a split six feet off the ground. <laughs> well, I can't do that. <laughs> I'm still working on that. I have to um, go through about four to six hours of rigorous training and without a break mm. and uh, then I have to fight five black belts black belt men on one I fight five black belt men I fight one on one then two on one then three on one four on one and then five on one and they all they <laughs> They all, they all get a break, and I, I was don't. I going to say, so. this is like joining a gang. Yeah, it, it, it almost is. <laughs> <laughs> this is bad. Well, take a look at the tapes that Julie saw. Remember, you're going to vote again. Here we go. First, there's Brett. He admits that his last two dates stood him up. And when he asked them why, both women claimed to be too tired. Now, his four requirements for a date are an IQ over 100, laugh at his jokes, athletic, and a nice face. And here's more on the fourth requirement, the nice face. You gotta look at the face right away because if they have great legs or whatever and the face is bad, I mean, it's not a, you know, you can't just look at their legs all the time, you gotta look at their face, so, uh, <laughs> your smile, the face, and then, uh, you know, there are other body, body parts, but the, the legs are a good place to start. <laughs> Next, there's Steve. He claims that he's a little shy, but he admits to flirting with uh, married and engaged women. He refuses to date a woman who perms her hair. And here's why Steve considers him a good, himself a good catch. I think I am nice. I've been brought up by a very nice family, so 
I always got yelled and beat up by my sisters whenever they came home from a, a relationship and said, don't ever be like that. So it's like, <laughs> I've got it ingrained in me what I should be and what I shouldn't be. Okay. Finally, Eric, he admits that uh, when he tries to be funny on a date, it doesn't always work out. He never refuses an invitation from a woman. He thinks it's better to accept, go out, and bore her to death. Eric uh, <laughs> hates women who can't control their temper, and he told us about an experience with just that type of woman. I was dating a girl for quite some time, and it was drawing close to the end of her relationship. So uh, as we pulled up in front of her house, and I proceeded to call it off, she uh, had a, taken a bowl of fruit salad to a party which nobody had eaten, and she thought, deemed it necessary to take that fruit salad and apply it into my lap. <laughs> All right, those are the three men Julie had to choose from. Time for you to vote. Who do you think would be the best man for? choice we're out of time so we're going to find out who julie picked and hear everything that happened on that day tomorrow that's our show for today i'm chuck woolery i hope all your dates are good ones tonight see you chuck woolery's wardrobe furnished by bernie this is John Cervenka speaking for Love Connection. Love Connection is an Eric Lieber production produced in association with and distributed by Warner Brothers Domestic Television Distribution.